Portable gaming is nothing new, and there are more ways to do it than ever before. You could go down the retro route and pick up something like this. This is an original Game Boy Pocket. It doesn't have a backlit screen. In fact, it doesn't have a color screen, and the screen is pretty small. Now, you can remedy some of those problems by fitting an aftermarket IPS backlit panel, which I have done here in this Game Boy Advance. That is a much nicer experience to use, but it's still pretty small. Or you could go for something more modern. You could get something like this. This is the Switch Lite. Obviously, it already has a backlit panel and it's much bigger. Pretty nice. The Switch Lite features a 5.5 inch 720p panel. If you're looking for something with more resolution than that, you could pick up something like this. This is the original Steam Deck. It features a 7 inch 60 hertz 1280x800 panel. But the Steam Deck is by no means the highest resolution portable that you can get on the market, but it is the highest resolution one that I've got. Or is it? This is the U-Perfect K118 2K 144Hz portable gaming monitor. Take the Steam Deck for example. You could plug your Steam Deck into this K118 2K portable gaming monitor and take your Steam Deck from a 7 inch 60Hz to an 18 inch 144Hz screen. And you can do it all using a single cable. Now it should be said that you need to find a game that will actually run at 144Hz on the Steam Deck, but if you do, then you can on this monitor. All you do is take one end of one of the two supplied USB-C cables and plug it into the monitor, and take the other end and plug it into the Steam Deck, and it will spring to life. Now while you can run it on a single cable, it is advised to use the additional USB-C cable plugged into power in order to get the maximum brightness and to triple charge the Steam Deck at the same time. So let's do that. There you can see the brightness has jumped up significantly from where we were previously. One thing I have noticed specifically with the Steam Deck, if you're in the Steam Deck mode like I am here, the resolution doesn't quite look as sharp as you might expect and I found that it actually runs better when in desktop mode. So if I switch to desktop mode now, you can see immediately the UI elements are looking much sharper. And then if I launch Need for Speed Heat, here you can see the screen resolution of the monitor looks crystal clear in the desktop mode. And in a minute when I switch back to the Steam Deck mode, it will be significantly less. It's not so obvious in the cutscenes or pre-rendered videos, um, but things like the character selection screens and the game itself run much sharper when the screen, uh, when the Steam Deck is in the desktop mode rather than the Steam Deck mode. Having said that, this game doesn't run particularly well on the Steam Deck in desktop mode either. So. take a look at the smoothness of the menu screen, the sharpness of the car, everything looks pretty sharp when in this desktop mode. The loading screen looks a lot sharper, you get in that full 2K resolution, which if I press the menu button here you can see it's on the full resolution. So again the cutscenes are rendered nice and sharp, I'll skip through that. So just on this screen, for instance, character selection, you can see this white selection bar is nice and sharp. All the characters are nice and sharp. If we pick one out, you can see it's looking sharp. It's the full 2K resolution. Again, cutscenes look nice and sharp. I think the Steam Deck itself is struggling to run this game a little bit, but there we are. But everything is running nice and smoothly. and it looks really good. Now, if I switch to the Steam Deck mode, which by the way, if anyone knows how to exit that game from the desktop mode on the Steam Deck without having to do a full restart, 
just let me know down in the comments because I haven't managed it without doing a full restart. I've tried, you know, Steam and X and all these different combinations on the forums, but ultimately I have to restart this thing every time I try that. Okay, so now we are back in the Steam Deck mode and I'm going to relaunch the same game. And already I can notice that the resolution of the screen on here doesn't look quite as sharp as it did in the desktop mode. If I press the menu button on the monitor, it's still showing the full resolution, but for whatever reason, the Steam Deck can't push that resolution in the menu screen to this monitor. But if I launch the game, then let's see what resolution we get. Also, I put the frame rate up, so we'll be able to see what frame rate we're running in the desktop mode. Okay, now we're in the desktop mode, you can see that the same cutscene from the start of the game is not nearly as sharp as it is in the desktop mode. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, but that's how it is. But that seems to be more of a Steam Deck issue than it does of the monitor. I can show you a similar example on the menu character, on the menu selection screen. So here again, you can see the car nowhere near as sharp. You can see a lot more pixelation on this versus on the previous mode so again i don't know what's going on there that's something to do with the steam deck the loading screens look a little sharper but again not as sharp as in the desktop mode so there's definitely something going on there again same goes for the cutscenes. they're pretty sharp and they're obviously pre-rendered so they're not so bad but if i skip through to the character selection screen here you can just see there's some more jagged lines and the characters aren't quite as sharp but again that seems to be an issue with the output of the steam deck rather than the monitor so let's move on the monitor does have built-in speakers but they're not much to write home about and to be honest you shouldn't be expecting much from a device this thin and light there is however a 3.5 millimeter output which is nice to see so if you want to connect up your own speakers directly to the monitor you can do so the monitor features two usb type c ports as well as a mini hdmi port as previously mentioned the monitor will run off of a single usb cable depending on a compatible device so if you've got something like a macbook or an imac the steam deck you've seen it can actually power the monitor as well as carry the video signal there isn't a battery inside the monitor so you do need to deliver some kind of power and quite often it is more preferable to add the additional USB-C cable plugged into a wall brick that's included because that's how you get the maximum brightness for the screen. Speaking of maximum brightness, it's okay. It does the job. It's bright enough for most use cases that I've tested but ultimately it is only 250 nits so it's not going to compare to something like an iPad Pro for example. The 18 inch IPS panel has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and covers 100% of the sRGB and the DCI P3 color gamut. Uperfect states that the viewing angle is 178 degrees for this panel but in my personal opinion you want to be pretty straight onto it otherwise it does start to get pretty dark at more acute angles. The monitor also supports HDR although I haven't been overly impressed with it as well as FreeSync support. The monitor weighs just over a kilogram and comes in this rather handy and nice protective sleeve which doubles as a stand. The folio case is pretty nice to keep it protected and honestly it works pretty well as a stand but I was able to 3D print this one that is much sturdier and has a steeper angle so I did. It also features mountings for VESA on the back so it does mean that you can mount it onto any standard monitor arm that you wish. Overall build quality of the monitor I have to say is pretty good. It is aluminium all the way around so the back of the case, the sides of the case feels pretty sturdy. It's got pretty minimal bezels on the top and the sides and just slightly bigger on the chin there but you know it's pretty minimal. The overall thickness of the monitor is just 12 millimeters which means it's thinner than quite a lot of thin laptops like this HP for instance it's much thinner than this. It's also significantly lighter although obviously there's a computer in here and not in here. So you may be wondering at this point why did I mention all those old game consoles at the beginning? Well the answer is one of the main ways I've been using this monitor is not with the Steam Deck to play modern games, it's actually with this. 
my iPhone 12 mini to play retro games using the Delta emulator app. Let me show you. So, if I take one of these Apple dongles that takes a HDMI into a Lightning, stick a regular sized HDMI in one end and the mini HDMI into the monitor. This is the cable that comes with the monitor. So you won't need to get the cable, just the dongle. If you've got USB-C iPhones, I guess that would plug straight in. I can put the Delta emulator on the screen there. I can then connect a Switch Pro controller to my iPhone via Bluetooth, and then I can play my retro games on a much bigger screen. Which is not very easy to do when the monitor's facing the camera. Let's say, for example, you'd like to play a little bit of Mario Kart Advance. Well, now you can on a much bigger screen. This will of course work with other emulators that are rapidly joining the App Store. There's a PSP one on there now, I believe, as well as RetroArch, and I think this is just gonna explode. So something like this monitor for retro games playing off of your iPhone is gonna be really useful. Admittedly, I'm not maxing out the 2K resolution of the panel by doing this, but I think it's a pretty nice size to play these games on. It's not as big as a TV where it's kind of too big, and it's a lot bigger than a phone screen, which is probably a little too small. So for me, I quite like the size. Otherwise, there is one other way that I've been enjoying the use of this monitor. And it looks a little something like this. I've plugged an old Amazon Fire Stick into the monitor using a little dongle that converts the mini HDMI to a full size and then plugged it straight in and it works great. So it's basically now a standalone portable Fire TV. You could even run this off a battery bank. This would be great for camping or taking on holiday. You can use it to watch YouTube or any of your other favorite apps that you use on your Fire Stick, but portably, how good is that? It's surprising how many different uses you can find for a monitor when it becomes portable. I'm thinking, for instance, about mounting this setup on the wall, but making it battery powered, and then it'll be a kind of like small Samsung frame TV. If you're thinking of picking up a monitor yourself, then you can use my affiliate link down below and you can get up to $30 off your purchase. Let me know your thoughts about the K18 portable gaming monitor. Would you get one? What would you use it for? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.